We finally have the answers and know how to move forward with our investment bill. Hey, um, I just got the results back from the concrete. While things have been at a standstill at the treehouse build, nothing has slowed down on our own property. It's a necessary project. It's just a really, really big one. Although we are used to tackling big projects, the feelings of being overwhelmed always appear from time to time. This has been a, a dream of hers for a very long time. We're finishing the fence line, buttoning up the stone on the foundation, preparing for the bedroom wing build to begin, and recovering from the disaster at the investment property. I take full credit for this one, 100%. <laughs> You're welcome. It is never this cold at the end of April, but here we are. We've got a cold snap coming through and well, the turkeys are old enough to be outside. They're not old enough to be outside in the temperatures that we're gonna be experiencing um, tonight. So we've got the potential of snow, the temperatures are dropping well below freezing, and that means that we need to get them put back in the brooder. So Aaron got the brooder all set up, the heat lamps are on, the boys got the turkeys, everybody's in there now. It's just kind of crazy, it being almost May, and it's getting back down to the 20s. It's, it's too wild, too cold for these turkeys. Now they're gonna be getting it covered up, it'll be a nice warm place tonight. Hey, now I like using a uh, cement board to cover you guys up a few more. <laughs> a little West Virginia ingenuity, right? I'll keep the heat in. <laughs> oh. Good job, guys. Okay, that we worked. got some warm turkeys. Yeah. Warm now. You guys remember the other day I cut the backside of the wheel wheel out and also I did the where's that at front side right there um, I'm gonna take some primer prime it up take some white paint try to match as best as I can I doubt it's gonna match it's a farm truck it doesn't really matter but we're gonna take care of it so it doesn't rust So we are heading out to assess our fence line. At least that's what we're telling ourselves we're doing. But what I think we're actually doing is trying to convince ourselves that we are going to finish this and not be doing fencing and stone for the rest of our lives. <laughs> Look at that wooden fence come down this way and metal tied in next to the pond. We get everything done, we'll open that entire side open and we'll have roughly 12 acres, probably, roughly 12 acres all together for the animals. They're gonna love it. They're gonna love it. Absolutely I'm gonna love, love it. it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be tell. Can we? We have a kind of overwhelming chunk of property that we're trying to get fenced in. We're not gonna be touching the wooded acreage other than like a small strip that runs along the side of the pasture just to give the livestock some natural access to shade. But other than that, our focus is just fencing in the pastured areas. So to help you all visualize the job, I drew a basically a fence line on a picture for you guys so you know 
exactly what the job entails that we're undertaking. From our house, the line will go straight down to the end of our pasture around the bottom and back up past the feed station and barn where it'll cut down to the pasture that goes around the pond. From here, it cuts off out of the range of the camera, but basically it wraps around the pasture, some of the mountainside and back up to where it will meet the wooden fence. All in all, it feels like a lot of land to cover. Um, I guess maybe that's just because it's just the two of us doing it, but it's going to be worth it to get this job done because it's gonna bring us a lot of peace of mind and it's going to allow us to bring home some guard animals to help protect the livestock. So it's a necessary project. It's just a really, really big one and a really monotonous one and it's it's been very time consuming but we're going to be happy with it once it's done <laughs> beautiful out here isn't it yeah and warm you're warm it's cold silly yeah it's warm <laughs> how are you always so hot <laughs> Today is one of those days where our project has taken a little longer than we expected. The one thing that has saved us so much time and money is our membership with Walmart Plus, which includes a delivery service where fresh groceries get delivered right to your house. It's been a lifesaver for us, and it means that even when our work days get extended a little bit longer than we would like, we still don't have to miss out on family s'mores night because we are able to get all of our ingredients delivered. This video is sponsored by Walmart Plus. They have everything we need from fresh produce to snacks, ingredients to pull together dinner, and extras like crayons to keep the little one busy while I pull together dinner. I can get dinner on the table all at the same low price that I can get in the store, but with Walmart Plus, I get it delivered with no delivery fees. This is a huge help to us because we can get what we want when we want it. And tonight, that just so happened to be pasta and marshmallows. And since I'm not having to make the trip into town to go to the grocery store, I can tackle the other things that I need to get done. I'm gonna get started on dinner, but if you wanna check out Walmart Plus, you can click our link in the description below or go to walmartplus.com to start your 30-day free trial. Thanks again, Walmart, for sponsoring this video. So we have the results for the concrete core samples that were done on our trout pond investment property. For those of you who don't know, we hired a concrete contractor to pour the foundation for what we named the Trout Pond Treehouse. It's a project that we're building as an investment for our golden years, and unfortunately, the project went south just about as soon as it started. The contractor was not following the contract in terms of putting rebar in the walls. The consistency of the concrete being poured into the concrete forms was basically soup. And as soon as the forms came off, it was clear the foundation was not only unlevel, but it was laid out completely wrong and flaking already. So it was a mess. Um, we went through and we core drilled three holes on the walls just to get them all tested to verify the concrete is good and we got those results back. The purpose of the core sampling is to test the strength of the concrete that was poured. Basically, a sample is put in a hydraulic press and crushed to determine the PSI of the concrete. 31 to 70. Uh, the third. Um, it's 3860. 860. 30, yeah, I'm not going to make it either, but uh, okay. again. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Come on, get that yellow down there. Me downtown? There down. So, one of the three samples passed. I'm curious to see which ones and what area. They are labeled and marked. I'm curious to see which ones are what. 
it was all said and done. But the, the one that did pass got 3,000 PSI. The other two were in the 2,400 range of PSI. So. And 3,000's code. So he says, yeah. So. It's coming down. Starting over. Hey, Josh. Hey, Justin. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing well. Hey, um, I just got the results back from the concrete. And uh, two out of three um, failed. Oh, I'm serious. It's fine. Um, it's what it is. I, I anticipated it. But uh, two of them came in at like around 2,400 PSI. And they'll only be over 3,000 PSI. Um, yeah. Let me see what I can get done for you, man. I'm sorry. Not a problem. I'll see you, man. Later. All right. See ya. Two weeks. Hopefully. We'll see. It's coming down. So we got to tear it down. We, we have to. We, I guess, accepted that was going to happen before we went there and got the results back. Or, or, we expected. mentally prepared ourselves for the fact that this was likely what it was going yeah. to be. Because the, the thing is, the last thing that we want to do is spend all of our money to build a house on top of this foundation and then you know two years down the road or whatever it is find out that you know our gut instinct was right that it, it wasn't okay and then what are we going to do we're going to like jack the house up or i don't even know we're going to have to you would have if you have started, had a big huge crack down the side of it and it started coming apart we would you jack the house up you pull it out and you do it again with the house over the top and that that's that's a nightmare you're talking a lot of money exactly before we start anything let's just Wash your hands of it, pull it out, do it again, get started. Yeah, it's 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 very disappointing, but I think that the way that you and I tend to handle things is like we just very matter of factly. Like we are, we're not going to get emotional no. about it. Like we mm -hmm. see what we need to do, and that's what it is. We're not going to, you know, just complain and be down about it. We're just going to move forward and do what we need to do because we can't build on top of that current foundation that's there. So no. it's either demo, demo, demo. So start the bottom, we'll get it up in the air, in place with, with mortar, hold it in place, and then we'll start stacking on top and do little pieces of stone that we've been doing, and then stack it all the way up. We'll flip flop them as they go up, but they're all they're all different rock, a piece of stone, and they're all bigger and smaller, so it should look natural. <laughs> Somebody's being awfully messy today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't grow it. Do a little rock here, a little rock there. Oh, yeah. I'm going to cut him. Quite a good bit, huh? you want it flat against the top or are you okay with a little gap? A little gap, fine. Okay. Guys, we officially have our very first corner done. And it looks so good and it was the easiest thing that we've done with stone this entire time. I wouldn't say that. It was because... The reason why you think that <laughs> is because... You don't have a choice in how they fit, you just got to put them up and no, deal with it. No, no, maybe. <laughs> We're so used to it though, that's why. It's easy. Oh, really? Yeah, girl. No. Yeah, no. we do it for days now, so. I know that. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is. It looks good. That does look good. But the, now the issue is making all that stuff fit. Don't worry about that. I got this. Okay, I'll make some mortar. You make that fit. <laughs> what are the chances of this? Look at that. Stop. No, you just gotta trim it just a tiny bit. And it'll... I, I, I take full credit for this. <laughs> Take full credit for this. I'm the one that found this. I, I cut the I cut this thing two days ago, and I said it looks like, <laughs> and uh, I put it down right there. But now it fits. I take full credit for this one. 100. <laughs> percent You're welcome. Uh, 
Alright, that is done. That looks good too. It does. <laughs> so, not that much left, girl. Nah, we're about halfway there. Halfway there. Keep in mind, there's no dorm on the other side, so. Thank goodness. I know. You know what, Josh? You're such no. a strong, beautiful man. I think I'm gonna let you take the lead on this one. That's fine. I'll work the digging, you can work the digging bar. Wait, we have to use a digging bar? Yeah. We have all of the tea stakes driven all the way down from our house where the wooden fence is at, all the way down to where the pig paddocks start. Um, so we're pretty much ready to start pulling wire. But before that, we need to install some posts in the ground with a couple of gates so that we have like the actual post to attach the fencing to and then we can get everything stretched and this entire section is buttoned up and then we just have like a small section left that's going to take us to the very end of the pasture. Yes. Yes. And then we're really close. Really close. It's, it's, it's nice. This has been a, a dream of hers for a very long time, had the entire pasture fenced in. Yeah. And we're uh, on the verge of getting it done for you. It's gonna give me a lot of <laughs> peace of mind having, just knowing where everybody's at because there's so much property and I'm always like keeping an eye out where And I'm more laid back group... when it comes to the animals. I'm like, they're fine, they're fine. Yeah. And she's more- I'll lose sleep at it yeah. overnight if I'm worried that somebody's wandering and nobody really does because I think we've created a really happy place. Mm -hmm. That's why like Leon and you know, all the sheep they don't, there's no fenced in boundaries, so they don't actually, they don't go anywhere. They don't. They're no. happy, but I just want to know that everybody is home. <laughs> you know? Yeah. This will give me that peace of mind. Yes, it will. The good news is that soil looks nice and uh, soft enough that it doesn't look like that digging bar is going to be necessary today. Do you hear that? It's all shale, and I'm uh, probably six inches down. This is deeper than you normally get. It's not shale. <laughs> you hear that? I got a massive piece of shale I can't break. I'm gonna put that digging bar against that shale, and I'm gonna put this guy on it. Is it gonna work? I Let's do bet. So we know it works. Definitely works, but we also definitely need ear protection. Let's spin it out real quick. All right. That's what we're doing with our hair, a bunch of this. Mountain living. That blue shell. Yeah. Where to go? <laughs> At least we'll sleep well at night. Let's all wait, guys. 
Well, safe consistency is the uh, Airbnb build. <laughs> but uh, this is for a post, not a foundation wall. <laughs>